Yo, this video is gonna make Gladrocker freaking cream his pants. Welcome back. This is part two of this video. Told y'all it would get uploaded this month. All right, so where are we at? Well, okay, we're at the Spiral Geographic Society Archives. Yippee! I talked about it in my last video, but basically it's a retired dungeon where it was the prequest to Celestia and it was so hard, they just said, all right, we're not gonna make it like a required dungeon. And then, uh, then they just made it retired altogether so no one could do it but people who did do it or who got up to this quest and unlocked the dungeon are still able to do it to this day and i am one of the oh god and i am one of the lucky people who can do this gauntlet which is very fun all right so again i have footage of me doing this entire dungeon uh this was taken last year so this was before i got the cutie patootie badge uh that you see right now it's basically the same thing nothing changed obviously but i did try to do actually i think i did manage to get all uh activate all the cheats that the bosses did and if i didn't i'll probably like get some footage of that as well but i'm pretty sure i did so i guess i could just explain the dungeon or the whole gauntlet i want to like make this a little bit more professional you know what i mean y'all know what i mean all right let's do it so now that we're in the void the very comfy void let's do a quick summary of the entire gauntlet itself this gauntlet has 10 levels in total, the intro room, 5 mob rooms, 2 puzzle rooms, and 2 boss rooms, and all the bosses cheat in this dungeon. Yippee. To even get into this dungeon in the first place, you would have to have beaten Dragonspire, then speak to Hailstone Bailstorm for a side quest, which is like very long, so it's like an entire quest line that I'm putting up right now, and then you would enter the gauntlet itself once you get to a certain spot. And you had to have done this all the way back before it was a retired quest line back in July of 2010. So yeah, not a lot of people got up to this part or even got to the dungeon itself. So now that I have like done all the yapping for the intro part, let's go ahead and just get right into the more yapping with actually getting into the dungeon and doing the floors. So here is the gauntlet. Um... I am able to go in since I completed the quest back in the day. So yeah, we're just gonna go in <laughs> inside. So as you can see, the first floor, it has Darren Whisperwind, which basically he's the guy who explains, hey, you know, the bosses in here, they cheat and they're very stinky. So that's literally all this floor is. You've seen him in other dungeons before. He's not like a new person to anyone, or maybe he is. He's in like the older dungeons. So like the older, harder dungeons. Uh, but you know, anyway. Again, now these next floors are just mobs, so we're just gonna fly through them as they're all they are, is mobs fights. And really, who cares about watching mob fights? That's boring. Okay, let's move on. Oh, it's a puzzle! <coughs> Welcome to the first puzzle room. In the room, you'll see a book pedestal in five boxes. When you interact with the book, the narrator will tell a story, and the story itself is the puzzle. But of course, I already know the code, and from left to right, these are the boxes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And according to the story that was given to us, the code is 3, 2, 1, 4, 5. Failing the puzzle will result in mob spawning, so getting it right the first time is recommended, obviously. Anyway, the, the, the puzzle is three, two, one, four, and then five. Yep, we finished it. Hey, the fight is on. Where oh. are those guys? No good half-blind skeletons. I told them to keep their good eye on the door. <gasps> All right, welcome to the first boss. At the beginning of the first round, he'll always spawn a tower shield of 65% and he'll play it every three to four rounds. At the end of the first round, he'll cast an earthquake and then summon his minions, which will start, you know, fighting at the next round after that. He'll cast a cleanse ward that removes two negative wards if a trap is placed on him or his minions and removes weaknesses on him and his minions. So traps and weaknesses don't work uh, on this boss. Now you may have noticed I was able to place a feint on the boss without him removing it. I will explain why that is possible in detail in just a moment, but for now, let me explain what he will remove when he uses the cheat. If you place any type of prism on Stormclaw, he will remove the prism and another trap if there is one placed. Keep in mind he will always remove two traps no matter what. So be aware as he is not the only one who will remove prisms in this dungeon. Hidden traps will still activate this cheat. For example, using Keeper with the Flame will still activate the cheat. Technically, since you still hit the boss, he will place a shield on himself and also use the Help Me cheat, which 
will make his minions attack you, so you know. That's... Triple traps such as Spirit Trap or Fuel will activate the cheat, however, he will only remove two traps, leaving only one trap remaining. So if you were a fire and used fuel, you can keep one fire trap on the boss if you use it. When it comes to AoE traps, Stormcloud will actually bug out, and as you will see in just a moment, he will cast Cleanse Ward after the next turn, which is weird as he does not have Cleanse Ward in his spellbook, so the only explanation to this is a bug in his cheat. He will also, most of the time, cast Cleanse Ward on the wizard, so technically, his cheat still activates, but it is bugged and does not work properly. So while at times he will remove the trap on himself, most of the time, from experience, he will use Cleanse Ward on the wizard. When it comes to weaknesses, he will only remove one weakness at a time, so using anything like Threefold Fever will only take one negative charm away from him. Keep in mind that this cheat only activates if his minions are on the field. If he is alone, he will not activate this cheat by any means. That is why I was able to place a feint on the boss without him removing the trap. So you could, potentially, place a trap on him at the first turn as long as his minions are not there. So if the minions were on the field and you were to flee and come back and his minions were there, unfortunately you will not be able to place a trap on him as his minions will be there first turn. Oh, that's a, that was a mouthful with that one cheat, but it was confusing at some points, so I just had to go and say all that. Anyway, if the wizard attacks a tired fighter and kills him, either attacks or kills, the lazy henchman and the half-witted skeleton will say I saw that and cast their respected spells, rebirth, and then... Losses. If General Stormclaw is attacked, however, he will have his minions cast Rebirth without the Absorbs, and Tired Fighter will cast Stormlord. That is what the wiki says, but in this scenario, uh, they never actually casted Rebirth when I hit General Stormclaw. Uh, instead, they just did Colossus and Stormlord, so yeah, I don't know what, what happened there, but you know, it's whatever, that's what actually happens. When it comes to hitting him with multi-hits, if you were to hit him with a multi-hit, his minions will actually cast their assigned cheat casts multiple times. So in this scenario, I used Minotaur, and he did a shield, and then said, help me. And the minions casted their Colossus and their Storm Lord. Oh lord, I messed that up. Uh, twice. Uh, so obviously, if you give some time, you'll see that it is hits twice. Because the Minotaur hits the boss twice in this case. So, yeah, there you go. So, how do you actually beat this boss? Well, there's a couple ways you could. Uh, one way is you could just kill all the minions. And, well, they won't come back if you kill all the minions at once. Um, and if you keep the boss alive, it's whatever. You can just kill them afterwards. Uh, but you can also just, you know, kill them all at the same time. Just, just blow through it. Just one hit to kill them all. Uh, and that's all, basically it. The main drop this boss does drop is, uh, the Wayfinder boots. And they tend to drop it pretty much every time you eat him. Most of the time, pretty much. Alright, these next two floors, after floor 5, are just mob floors. So they're not very important. And like I said, doing them is boring. So we'll just go ahead and skip to the next room. Alright, here's another- Oh, what is this? Oh my god. What the freak is this? Oh my- I- Hold on. Welcome to the second and final puzzle in this gauntlet. Basically, here is the puzzle in its entirety. Um, don't ask how I got this picture. I got it from a reliable source. Anyways, three wizards need to stand on the three sun pedestals shown here. And a fourth wizard needs to flip the switch when everyone is on their respected pedestal. Now, notice I talk about being four wizards needed to do this puzzle. That is because you have to have four wizards to even complete this puzzle. If you don't have four wizards, you cannot complete this puzzle and simply must stand on a snake pedestal to spawn the mobs. So if you're doing this solo, you just have to stand on a snake, but you literally can't do it solo, so that is it. That's literally all this puzzle room is, and then you can go to the next floor. Oh! This is the final mob room of the gauntlet. Now, before you freak out, the seething wraiths may look like bosses, but they are simply glorified mobs, as they don't actually have a ton of health, and they also have no cheats. So, this is just a normal mob room. So, you'll be able to just fly through this, and we can head to the final room of the gauntlet. Me a bad oh. feeling about this. Uh-oh. You will be greatly rewarded if I succeed. 
I need you to keep the young wizards busy while I prepare my attacks. Do not let them cast any global spells. Oh, no. oh my. It seems we have some eavesdroppers. It matters not. Let's finish them quickly. My master grows impatient. He's still looking away. I'm not sure. Hey, hey. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Here we are. The final boss of this gauntlet. Eureka Gloomthorn. The one with the infamous Zero Pip Power Nova Fire Spell. There's a lot to go with, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with the Rat Illusionist, as they are the ones that usually cheat first. On their first turn, these rats will cast Tower Shields of 90% onto Eureka and Knuckles McCloud. So, whenever they're broken, they will always replace the shield, so that kind of sucks. Knuckles McCloud. Whenever you cast a healing spell, he will always cast Rebirth that does 750 health without the absorbs. Pet heals do not count against this cheat. Now on to Gloomthorn himself. If he is attacked or defeated before Knuckles McCloud is, then Knuckles will give him helping hands, and then Eureka will cast a Fire Dragon out of turn. For some reason, Morgan's Requiem will not trigger the cheat, which is odd, but you know, it's whatever. Eureka will cast Cleanse War on himself or to any minion who receives a trap. That means literally any trap. If you cast a prism on him or anyone, he will remove that prism, which is odd because prisms aren't usually affected by these types of cheats. The, only the first trap of a tri-trap spell will be removed. AoE traps such as Windstorm and Mass Prisms will not trigger this cheat. Hidden traps will also not count, such as Keeper of the Flame and Brimstone Revenant. Pet spells will also not trigger this cheat, though he might randomly remove traps later on as he does have Cleanse Ward in his spellbook. Now for the infamous Fire Nova spell. If a global spell is not active around the battlefield, that is like an aura, that big aura around the field, he will yell out power spell and then will cast a fire version of power nova dealing 770 damage to all the players on the field every three turns. He'll sometimes also use a scarecrow, but you know, I've never really got that on footage, so whatever. Now, how would one go and actually finishing this boss fight? Well, but you know, you could just, you know, plow through it, like I said before in the last boss fight, and just kill them all in one going as it is possible. But if you can't, the strategy would be killing the rats first, then killing Knuckles McCloud, and then finally killing Loonthorn himself. So, you know. If for any reason you can't just kill them all at one go, that would be the strategy. Also, having a global bubble spell up at all times is very helpful as he won't be spamming the Power Nova spell every three turns if you have a global bubble up. I say that three times. And that's how you beat this boss. The main drops that Gloomthorn will drop are the Wayfinder Robe and the very rare Wayfinder Helmet that gives a Ninja Pig item spell card. Now, it took me some time to get the helmet, and I almost didn't even notice I got it, but it is a very rare drop, so if you get it, you're pretty lucky. There is also a very interesting pet you can get. You can get the Blustering Scamp, which is like not really super rare, but it is a drop that you can get from this place. So it's really it's cool. And that is the Spiral Geographic Society Archives Gauntlet. And here's my reaction to beating the gauntlet. Overall, yes, back in the day, this gauntlet was a very, very hard gauntlet to even attempt. But honestly, I had a great time going in and dissecting everything this retired dungeon had to offer. Honestly, if you want to give this dungeon a go and you have access to it, I'd say give it a try. It's honestly a great piece of Wizard 101 history. Also, let me know if you like these types of videos. If so, I, who knows? I might even do more in the future. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time, alright? Peace out.